The Holy Mount Kailash Parigrama Part 3 So what is the significance of Mount Kailash? You know the word Kailash where there is only celebration, joy Actually, whenever, wherever you are happy, that is Kailash And happiness is not a superficial happiness It should be from every cell of your existence, every cell of your body and mind that sense of celebration of happiness is what Kailash is. Mount Kailash, some unusual shape has led to speculation that perhaps the mountain is not a mountain at all. Many scientists have suggested that the top of Mount Kailash is actually a giant man-made pyramid from an ancient time. Mysterious Places Mount Kailash is a legendary place in West Tibet with an impressive height of 6,718 meters. Mount Kailash represents the excess of the world or the stairway to heaven for the people in the region. According to a description in the Piranus, Mount Kailash, his four faces are made out of crystal, ruby, gold, and lapis lazuli, and it is the pillar of the world. And it is located at the heart of six mountain ranges, symbolizing a lotus. From it flows four rivers, which stretch to the four quarters of the world and divide the world into four regions. And by this chance, today I would like to show you every corner of this trekking from Dirapuk to Zidulpuk, which have 22 kilometers, and also it is believed as the hardest day of the three days trekking around Mount Kailash. And the most difficult part of today's trekking is to cross the Dolmala Pass, which is 5,650 meters. And according to a religious saying that people with lots and lots of sin couldn't cross this pass easily. So anyway, let's start our holy trekking and I really hope that you will enjoy it with me. Hey guys, this is Chen Yang. Good morning to everyone. It is 7 a.m. exactly. And today we are going to start pretty early because we have a big pass to cross with 5,650 meters. And usually I also recommend you guys if you can start your trekking as early as possible because in the morning it will be much cooler than after the sun comes out so it will be much easier for you guys when the sun is not out so that will be the best time to start the trekking so best of luck guys let's start the trekking it's pretty cool so Prepared like clothes and everything. I mean, rest of the year, except at June, it will be a little bit warm. Other than that, the temperature will be always like 70 degrees Celsius. So. I actually thought that I'm the earliest one, but I actually can see lots and lots of people. They are already on the middle of the pass and it's really cold and yeah I recommend you guys that when you come here at the trekking you must have to bring torch with you because uh, at day two or day three when we are going from Dirakpuk to Zurulpuk we have to start pretty early so that's why torch you must have to bring with you you see in front of me is the group of family and they just made me so impressed because you see the mother was keep carrying her baby the baby was like one two three years old I guess and it's like one degree and super cold here and they're just trying to finish this cora because this place is too holy for them
and you see how beautiful today is and the sun is coming out and now I'm going to show you the sunrise onto the Mount Kailash. I actually couldn't imagine how hard it will be for them to prostrate for 52 kilometers around this holy Mount Kailash and really proud for them because they are not praying for themselves you know they are praying for other peoples and really proud of them. So you see up there those tents are actually the first tea house on the middle of the pass and those tea houses not just in tea house actually it is more or less like the station between earth and heaven so you know because if someone gets sick and couldn't continue they can immediately send you back to the hospital to Tarjan and if you are like so tired and couldn't climb the pass they also can rent you the horses and that they will take you up to the pass about oxygen you actually don't really have to worry because most of the tea houses here they sell the oxygens they do have a few tea houses on the right hand side and also on the left hand side and in this tea house they sell the black teas and some waters and soft drinks if you're wondering you see now inside that they do have a lot of local peoples all the spring waters from the mountains were frozen you see So that pass up there is called Dikbala Pass which means Sin Pass and that pass will actually decide who will stay and who can go and if you're with lots and lots of sin that pass wouldn't let us cross so that's why people call it Dikbala Pass which means Sin Pass. There we can see a sky burial place and also can see lots and lots of hair from dead people. And now I can see more and more people coming and from their dress it says that they are mostly from Western Tibet and most of them can actually do this trekking of 52 kilometers in one day which is actually impossible for us you know and I really don't recommend that for you guys as well especially the friend from other country because it's too high up here and your lungs couldn't really accept this altitude and you know as a Tibetan as a mountain people scientifically we also have been proved that we have bigger lungs than others <laughs> I am almost at the top of the Dekwala Pass. And since this morning, I've been walking under shade for two hours. And at the front, I can see the sunshine, sun was shining. And that was actually like the God is welcoming us. Wow, walking under sunshine is so comfortable, cool. you know. And today I really realized that sun is really important actually. And you see that sunshine was actually just in the middle of Dolmala Pass and it really looks like Lord Shiva or Buddha trying to pull us up through this pass. She loves him both.
Try to do it. Clearly, sure. And when we are making this trekking or cora, I really recommend you to have a proper boot, not like sport shoes. You see, so this is the road how it looks like. And now, this is the starting point of the famous Dolmala Pass that have 5,650 meters. You see up over there with the sunshine, so you have to climb up to there. And you see, from the starting point of Dolmala Pass, we can enjoy the view of northeast face of the holy Mount Kailash. Now I'm going to show you how difficult this Dolmala Pass looks like. It's and you see this old lady was so lucky because this young lady was keep helping her and without this help it's I, I think it's gonna impossible for this old lady <laughs> And actually, I'm so tired uh, after climbing this Dolmala Pass and I, now I'm at the middle of the Dolmala Pass. And actually, after seeing those prostrator, it was like I don't really have right to get tired because you see these guys, these poor guys, I mean, they're just prostrating and climbing this pass. You see at the prayer flags, actually, under those prayer flags, they have a small stream and people washes their hand over there and they're thinking that if you wash your hands over there it will wash your sin with it so that's how we believe and look at this beautiful glacier up there so right behind that is actually the kailash the east face of kailash And from their dress, it looks like they are from Eastern Tibet. And look at that strong mother. She was ca carrying her baby and climbing this Dolmala Pass, you know. I mean, I'm, I've been carrying like five kilos and it was really heavy for me. But look look at her, you know. I mean, her thicky, woolly uh, chupa with the baby. It's so heavy. And you see, they are hitting the stones and... That's how they are actually trying to get blessing from Mount Kailash. And from here, I'm feeling like I'm flying in the sky because you see, once you look down there, you see from down there we have been climbing. And you see, we are quite lucky to show you these peoples are Pun people and they are making the anti-clockwise Kora. And here under that rock, we can see lots and lots of pictures from dead people, you know. And that's our tradition to put the pictures of dead people under that rock. And we believe that if you put the pictures here, the spirit will go straightly up to the heaven. Oh. And around the tracking, people will always say to you Chinlapche, which means God bless you. What's up, Chinlapche? Just le. And now I only have to climb more or less like 50 meters to the Dolmala Pass. Wow. 
here I am almost to the top of the Dolmala Pass and you see this beautiful baby, he was just wrapped into the animal skin and he looks so warm in this skin. Finally, I have made it. I'm right now on the Dolmala Pass with 5,650 meters. And today I've started at 7 a.m. And right now it's like 11.30. So it's like six kilometers to climb. And it approximately takes me around four hours, four and a half hours. So that will be the time that it was going to take to climb Dolmala Pass. It is difficult, but it's worthly. So, so, so! So, so, so! As this place was believed as the land of God and even though the people nearby here are so nice and keep offering us food and trying to help us you know so you really don't actually have to worry when you are at the Kora. And now it is time to walk down and we have to walk down for 6 kilometers and we have climbed actually also 6 kilometers so it's like 12 kilometers for this pass. When we are going down, you also have to be really careful because you see it's pretty steep. Eh? After crossing Dolmala Pass, we will see the small lake which is called Gauri Kund, and this is actually the birthplace of the wife of Lord Shiva, which is called Parvati. You see the mountain just in front of me so I have to just go in this direction and there we have a tea house and we can have lunch and rest. So you see down there this is the tracking route how it looks like so I really recommend for you guys that you must have to have a proper tracking shoes with two hand stick. You know I thought that walking down will be much easier than climbing but actually it is much more difficult than climbing. Oh my god, you see him? He was prostrating on this kind of road. I mean, it's even difficult for us to walk down, you know. Let's see what's happening there. And you see she was wrapping her rosary onto this stone and it looks like footprints of someone looks like holy and that's actually how we Tibetan peoples are trying to get blessing from something holy. And that is the happiest group that I've made on this Kora because they are always going together. No one is living behind. That's really really steepy. Look down there. You see I've been coming down just from this top of the Lizzie. hill.
Oh my god, look at this lady. She was going to prostrate onto this steep road. I mean, that's too dangerous for them. So finally, I can see the Shabjik Tapu Tea House. You see the houses with the red color. So this is the place where we are going to have a lunch. And it is already one o'clock. And if we don't have a lunch here, then we have to walk another four kilometers. Finally, I am arrived at Shabjik Tapu Tea House. And uh, that was a beautiful tracking really really steep so you must have to be careful next time when you're doing Kailash Kora. And uh, Shabtu Tapu Tea House is the best option to have a rest, to have a lunch. So this is the Shabtu Tapu Tea House and it's actually full of people. This man here was from Eastern Tibet, which is approximately around 1,300 kilometers from here. And he was actually making one Kora every single day, which is about 52 kilometers. And he already had made five Kora. <laughs> I just ordered the uh, egg fried rice, which is also a good option, and it's delicious as well. It's beautiful lunch over here, and uh, now I still have to go more 12 kilometers to reach at Zudulpok Monastery. Let's go and. And these tents must be from the prostrator. From here, we actually can see the east face of Holy Mount Kailash. Look at the view here, it's just like in painting. The water of this river was coming straightly from Holy Mount Kailash and I'm pretty sure that this is the source of Sutlaj. And on the way to Kora, we actually can see lots and lots of cute marmot like that and we can feed them with biscuits, they like biscuits. When I am super tired, this is how I am resting during the Quora. <laughs> and the White House over there is the second tea house after Shabjik Tato Tea House, which is like four kilometers from Shabjik Tato. You see the hill over there, so behind this hill is Zurulpuk Monastery.
And now I can see my destinations of today. And here it says Zuttlepuk Monastery. Finally, I am here at Zuttlepuk Monastery. And today we have started at 7 a.m. and now it is 6 p.m. And I have used about 11 hours for today's trekking. And of three days trekking, we say today is the most difficult one, but I have finished it and was actually not really bad as what I thought, except the Dolmala Pass. Up there is the Zurlbrook Monastery guest house where I'm going to spend for tonight and down there is the new guest house which is owned by local. And here is the reception of the Zurlbrook Monastery guest house. I'm gonna get my key for my room and I'm gonna have a good relax after walking for 11 hours. This is how the room looks like and here we also have an optional like uh, four beds, five beds rooms, six beds rooms, seven beds rooms and this is how the room looks like. It's really simple but still it's clean. And tomorrow we are going to visit Zurlpuk Monastery early in the morning. Anyway, this is the end of third day Kora or Parikrama at Holy Mount Kailash. Today is difficult trekking and it is also a big challenge, but I think it is really, really worth. Because as we have a saying, the most difficult experience is the most beautiful memory that we can bring. But if I describe this three days actually, Tomorrow will be the easiest day of the three days trekking because we only have 12 kilometers to walk with no pass at all to climb. Anyway, thank you so much for every fans watching my video and please, please don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any question, please be free to ask about Holy Mount Kailash. This is Jamyang. Welcome to Tibet. We are the one that can show you the original Tibet.